In this video, we're going to be talking about all the ray diagrams, six ray diagrams of convex lenses and stick till the end because I'm going to be telling you a memory trick or a pro tip to remember all those ray diagrams in a snap of a finger and we're starting right now. Hey, this is Advet. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to build your memory, build your brain by uncovering fascinating facts and clear academic concepts, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of your videos. So I'm going to be doing this on the big whiteboard but before I go on I'd like to tell you that I already made one, two sessions on uh, spherical lenses and its components and also the focus and standard incident rays. I'd like you to watch both of those videos first because those are the basics of ray diagrams. I'll link to those in the cards right now. Please go and check that right now. Now it is right over here so that you will find it easy to comprehend as well as for me to teach. Now let's jump over to the big whiteboard. Now we look at ray diagram 1 when the object is kept at infinity and I've already told you what infinity means and how the object is kept at infinity in the concave mirror ray diagram. So let's assume the object is kept at infinity. I've marked these and this is the convex lens, optical center, focus 1, focus 2, center of curvature 1 and center of curvature 2. So center of curvature is obviously written as 2f1 and 2f2. I already told you that in the previous session. So now we'll draw, we'll assume that the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis. We have all, we all, always assume that in case if the object is kept at the infinity position. So let's draw two incident rays, one from top, one from bottom. So we studied SIR1, standard incident ray, rule number one in the previous session that all the light rays parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus. So now this will refract and pass through the focus. I'm only drawing one refraction for the sake of convenience. Double refraction ray diagrams will come in, I guess, 12 standard. So now the object, now the reflected rays are refracted rays are meeting at focus. So wherever the refracted rays meet, there will be the images formed. So now since the Refracted rays meet at f2, that means you can say that the image position is at f2, that means at focus 2, it is highly diminished, hd, and it is real and inverted. Now you might be wondering, how can I say this as real and inverted, because the image is actually point says we can't even see the image. So how can we name it as real and inverted? Well, there's a ray diagram where we need not assume that the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis. We assume that first. Now, if we don't assume also, it's okay. But now I'll show you the ray diagram when we don't assume that the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis in a moment. Now we look at the ray diagram when, the, when we do not assume that the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis. So now we will draw one ray which is not parallel to the principal axis. The vertical line. So now we have to measure angle i. We have to first find angle i, then we have to apply the formula sin i by sin r is equal to refractive index, which is a constant. So we have to apply this formula to find out angle r. And once we find angle r, we have to measure that and it will somewhat go this way. Okay? Actually, you can actually draw the same way roughly but if you want to measure and make life complicated you can do that i mean joking so now we look at standard incident ray 3 where we studied that all the light rays passing to the optical center will go undeviated so now let's draw that uh, so we need some more this way so, it is meeting somewhere over here. Okay, I'll drop this off. So, if we produce the image, it is again at F2 only. If you draw it properly, you'll get it. Now, we can see it is real and inverted. See, the arrow is downward down, below the principal axis. And again, this is highly diminished. Because, look at the object size and look at the image size. See. It is so big, this is so small, that's why highly diminished. Now we covered the concept of ray diagram 1, 
Now we move forward to our RD2. Now we look at RD2 when the object is between infinity and 2F1, that means the center of curvature 1. So now we'll assume that it is over here. Now we'll draw standard incident ray rule number 1, which is all the light rays parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus. So let's draw one. This will pass through the focus. Okay. So now we will draw the optical center one because that's the easiest. It will go undeviated according to SIR3. Now we see it is meeting somewhere over here. So if we make the image from the principal axis, it is meeting, it is there somewhere over here. Oh, yeah, somewhat over there. Okay. So we can clearly see that the object is image is between F2 and 2F2. That means image is between F2 and 2F2 and it is diminished. You might be confused uh, with the diagram but if you draw it with proper scale and pencil you will get that for sure. And it is again real and inverted. So now this was ray diagram 2 and the object was kept between infinity and center of curvature 1. Now we will move forward for ray diagram 3. Now we look at ray diagram 3 when the object is kept at center of curvature itself, center of curvature 1, that means 2F1. Now we will draw again same two rays again SIR1, all the incident rays parallel to the principal axis pass through to the focus. Then we will draw the optical center 1. Okay. So now we can see that the uh, rays are meeting here, the refracted rays are meeting over here. Now if we produce the image, it is at 2F2, it is exactly at 2F2, when you draw with proper scale and pencil you get the answer, okay. So now it is at proper uh, 2F2 and it is of the same size, so obviously it is at 2F2. And it is real and inverted, and it is of the same size as the object. See if you can see, it is the same right now. In the previous ray diagram, don't get confused. Draw the proper scale and pencil, you get the answer. Okay, so this was ray diagram 3. Now we we'll move forward for ray diagram 4. Now we we'll fo look forward for ray diagram 4 when the object is between center of curvature 1 and focus 1. So let's assume that the object is over here. Now we will again draw the same two rays. I prefer you to stick to those two rays because it is very simple. Incident ray parallel to the principal axis passes to the focus. Okay. Now optical center goes undeviated. So we can see it is meeting somewhere over here. Now again don't get confused. Draw it with proper scale and pencil. I will recommend you to draw along with me. Okay. I have always told you that. So the object is forming image is forming somewhere over here. So certainly this is beyond 2F2. The image images after 2F2, right? And we can see that it is real and inverted again. And we can also see that it is enlarged. Look at the object and look at the image. It is bigger. So it is enlarged. I, I won't say highly enlarged, but a little enlarged, magnified, should I say. So now this was ray diagram 4 and the object was between 2F1 and F1. Now I look at RD5. Now I move forward for ray diagram 5 when the object is at infinity itself, sorry, at focus itself. So let's draw at focus, Ab absolutely at focus. Now we'll draw this same two rays. All the incident is parallel to this process, passes to the focus. And all the optical things go undeviated. Are you observing that it is parallel? Yes? Yes, they are parallel. But I already told you in that concave mirror video that nothing in this world can be geometrically, exactly geometrically parallel to each other. That is not possible. So these rays which appear to be parallel will meet somewhere very far. So that very far uh, location can also be termed as infinity yes so these two rays will converge and meet at infinity 
So the image will be at infinity. Since the rays will meet after refraction at infinity, we don't know where infinity is. So the image will also be formed at infinity. It will be real and inverted. Try this at home, okay? And it will be highly enlarged. E. So it will be highly enlarged. And imagine if the object is like this, image will be somewhat even more bigger. So it will be highly enlarged, okay? Now I'll move forward for the most peculiar ray diagram 6. Look at ray diagram 6 when the object is between F1, focus 1 and optical center. So let's assume that object is over here. We'll draw the two rays again. It will pass through the focus. All the incident rays parallel to the principal axis. And we'll draw the optical center 1. So now these are in parallel in any case. But if you extend it backward, you will get a point where it will meet somewhere over here. So obviously the image is forming on the same side where the object is kept. It is true because the object is over here and the image is also over here. So therefore this is on the same side as that of an object. Same side as of the object. It is virtual and erect. So till five ray diagrams it was forming real and inverted. Now it is forming virtual and erect. So I that is why I told you this is the most peculiar ray diagram. And it is virtual and erect and it is enlarged. And this ray diagram proves why convex lens can be used as a magnifying lens. This is the reason why we can use that. So now we'll move forward for the pro tip where I will help you to remember all these ray diagrams in a split second. So we'll go for that in a moment. Now we look at the patterns uh, of the ray diagrams formed by the convex lens. I don't know if you observed, but there was one pattern that as the object moved towards the lens, the image went away from the lens in that direction. And finally it came at the same side of the object. So as the image object, sorry, moved towards the lens, image went away from the lens and finally it came on the same side as the object because it couldn't move farther than infinity if you remember that and the second pattern which is the most interesting one and the most important one as the object was getting closer to the lens the image size was getting increased so as object went closer to the lens the image size was increasing step by step till ray diagram 6 because in ray diagram 6 it wasn't highly enlarged that is a note to point, note to make but it was still enlarged so first it was point sized then diminished then of the same size then enlarged then highly enlarged and enlarged table in the uh, given in the book actually and you can find that these patterns are prominent now we look at the ray diagram opposites what I mean by ray diagram opposite is that some ray diagrams are opposite to each other. For example, ray diagram 1 was directly opposite to ray diagram 5. Why? Why? Because in ray diagram 1, object was kept at infinity and the image was forming at focus. In ray diagram 5, object is kept at focus but image is forming at infinity. So, ray diagram 1 is opposite to ray diagram 5. And what, is ray, what was ray diagram 2 when it was kept between center of curvature and infinity or beyond C, beyond 2F1. So then the object, the image was forming at uh, between F1 and 2F, 2F2 and 2F2, correct? So what if we keep the object, a object at between is 2F2 and 2F1 and F1? If then we can see that it was forming beyond 2F2. What I mean by that is, you got a bit, I got a bit ranty up there, but what I mean to say is, ray diagram 2 was opposite to ray diagram 4. This is one more pattern because in ray diagram 2, 
object was uh, beyond C and the image was forming between that focus and that center of curvature. But in ray diagram 4, the object was between uh, 2F1 and F1 and the image was forming beyond 2F2. So we can see that they are not directly opposite. What I mean by opposite is that uh, the what you call the terminologies will just interchange. Uh, the object one, the object location will be the image location and the image will be object in the opposite cases. And let me remind you, ray diagram 3 and ray diagram 6 are independent. As you may know, I have made a telegram group for all my subscribers. You can join and you can chat with me live. The link to which is in the description below. And if you want to build your memory brain for clear academic concepts, start now by subscribing. Hit the round icon right now on the screen so that you can subscribe and don't miss any of our videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.